Hello and welcome to TechSnips. You are watching Configuring Flex Links in the Access Layer. In this video, we're going to enable Cisco Flex Links, which is an alternative solution to the Spanning Tree protocol. Enabling Flex Links, we automatically disable Spanning Tree and still maintain basic link redundancy. One of the main reasons you would use flex links is to have that ultra fast failover occur when there is an outage between one of the uplinks from the access layer to the aggregation layer. With redundancy and loop control comes another issue and that is the MAC address table. How does the MAC address table get properly updated when one link fails over? Well, there is another feature that we're going to be enabling and that is the MAC address move update. So let's take a look at our network diagram. Here we have your typical Cisco core distribution access design where layer 3 switches run our dual core and redundant distribution switches. We're going to be focusing on this layer 2 access layer where we create redundant non-spanning tree uplinks from the access layer to this distribution or aggregation layer. One of the cool things about flex links is that you can apply it using ether channels and uh, that's basically what we're going to be doing what we're going to be using today. So let me give you some background information before we begin. We are running HSRP between aggregation switch 1 and aggregation switch 2 and the access and aggregation switches are connected via layer 2 ether channels. Now, aggregation switch 1 is active, okay, is an HSRP active uh, switch 4, uh, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and aggregation switch 2 is active for VLAN 30 and 40. Now, we're also using some standard HSRP tracking where aggregation switch 1 is tracking the status of port channel 2 as you see here is the, the layer 2 ether channel for VLAN 10 and 20 and in the event of a failure uh, this ether channel this uh, HSRP group is going to decrement its value so that aggregation switch 2 will, um, will take over the active status of VLAN 10 and 20 again in the event that port channel 2 fails and aggregation switch 2 is tracking the status on port channel 5 uh, for VLAN 30 and 40 and in the event that there is a failure aggregation switch 1 will be the active uh, uh, member for VLAN 30 and 40 but by default we're gonna set that uh, aggregation switch 1 is active for VLAN 10 and 20 and aggregation switch 2 is active for VLAN 30 and 40. Now one of the reasons for this is because we are going to be load balancing our flex links and we want to make sure that we have the best path to our default gateways provided by HSRP. Okay so what we're going to do is uh, VLAN 10 and 20 is going to be flowing in this direction and VLAN 30 and 40 is going to be flowing in this direction on axis 1 and from axis 2 VLAN 30 and 40 is going to flow in this direction and VLAN 10 and 20 is going to flow in this direction okay so it's going to be basically tuned in the direction of where the active uh, member is of the HSRP group now I advise that you print out this network diagram so that you can follow along with the configuration we're first going to jump onto access switch 1 and we're going to start the configuration. So let's see it in action. <laughs> 